part 2 to correcting her. Part 1 down below. Hit that sub button if you apparicate my work during a weeknight. What? I asked, bewildered. It really upset you when you learned Sarah had been with Rick, right? She inquired. I just nodded in agreement. Singing off key, she attempted a Percy Sledge song. You men think we're exclusively yours. What could be worse? I honestly can't imagine anything worse, I admitted. So, you believe being with me is the ultimate payback against Rick, and a way to get back at Sarah too? She probed. Perhaps, I replied, hesitantly. But I'm not after revenge. I just want to move forward. Revenge only matters if you see its impact, and I have no desire to see them again. That's where I come in, she said with a sly grin. Consider me your guide in moving on. Our time together was the first step. And it's just the beginning. Like you said, it's not about their actions or how long they lasted. What we have is deeper than just a physical connection. We're offering each other something more meaningful. He certainly offered something this morning, I joked. She just smiled in response. Stevie, that's not about revenge. I enjoy it as much as you do. But think about this. How much would it hurt Rick to know you're with me now, especially when I've stopped seeing him, and that I'm sharing experiences with you that I never did with him? That would sting, I acknowledged. That's just the start, she continued. Imagine how he'd feel if you and I started a family. I was taken aback, imagining how I'd feel in that scenario. Initially, it was just to get back at him, she confessed. I've wanted another child, but he couldn't make it happen. I chose you because you're kind and intelligent. But as we got closer, my feelings deepened. I love you, Stevie. I want us to have a child together and for you to be a part of their life. When they turn 18, I'll tell Rick everything. As for Sarah, you can decide if or when to tell her. By then, you might have a family with her, but she'll always know that it was her actions with Rick that led to us having our first child. That's quite a plan, I remarked, a mix of emotions swirling inside. It's your choice, she said softly. I'm expecting, and we can decide what to do about it together. I've always dreamt of being a father, I replied. And it doesn't look like that's going to happen with Sarah. There's more, she continued. I'm going to get Rick to hand over that car to you. The Chevelle. My eyes lit up. Yes, she confirmed. But there's a condition, she added. I raised an eyebrow, curious. He needs to apologize to you, she explained. Noting my reaction, she embraced me. I'm not saying you have to forgive him or become friends again. That's entirely your decision. You can even act friendly to stay close to me and our future child. But all you need to do is let him come here and apologize for betraying you with Sarah. After that, it's all in your hands. All right, I'll do it, I agreed. You must really want that car, she chuckled. No, it's not just about the car, I started. She looked at me, intrigued. What is it then? She asked. I want you, I confessed. In any way possible. Even if it means just being around, helping out with our child. You mean everything to me, Georgia. Tears welled up in her eyes. Georgia, I understand things might change between us. But being close to you is what matters to me. Stevie, she hugged me tighter. I can't believe you, a young and handsome man, would choose someone like me. But my feelings for you are just as strong. Do you know why I wanted to have this baby? It was partly out of spite, but also because I wanted a part of you with me. As I hugged her back, I couldn't help but laugh. What's so funny? She asked. You've always had a part of me, I said with a smile. Listen, Georgia, I said with a serious tone, it's right here. Gently, I guided her hand to my chest, over my heart. That moment overwhelmed her with emotion, and she hurried out of the house in tears. Soon after, I was sitting on my deck when I heard a knock at the fence. Opening it, I found Rick, who greeted me with a smile. Why are you smiling? I asked, my voice tinged with irritation. His expression quickly shifted from joy to shock. Steve, he exclaimed, sounding apologetic. I didn't mean to smile. I shouldn't have snapped at you, I admitted. But I'm struggling to understand why you find any humor in the situation. It's not the right time for this. I can't see the funny side in you hurting me, and you being part of the reason my life is falling apart. Maybe we should talk some other time. As I began to close the gate, he pleaded desperately for me to listen. Steve, there's nothing funny about it, he assured me. I smiled because I'm finally seeing an end to a very tough phase in my life. It's selfish, I know. May I come in? I led him onto the deck. He sat down, looking around nostalgically. I've missed this place, he said regretfully. But I know it's my fault. Steve, I need to tell you how sorry I am for what happened with Sarah. It wasn't something I sought out. I should have told you when she first approached me. I'm not like you, Steve. I'm not naturally charming or appealing. It took me months to get a date with Georgia. So, when Sarah showed interest in me, it was a boost to my ego. It was wrong, I know, but it was intoxicating. I didn't set out to betray you, but I got caught up in it all. After a while, I was the one reaching out to her. Steve, I'm trying to be as honest as I can here. I love my wife, Georgia. That woman, Georgia, she's been my rock when no one else was there. Can you believe I've betrayed her trust not once, but three times? It's astounding she still stands by me. She warned me though, one more mistake and I'm out. She's even got our lawyer drafting a marriage contract. I'd sign anything to keep my family together. But Steve, forgive me for saying this, there's just something about being with someone new, someone who hasn't experienced as much as Georgia has. 
I mean, she's given me three wonderful kids, but that changes things, you know. When I was with that other woman, any guilt just vanished. It was purely physical, nothing emotional. No kissing, no intimate moments, just a brief escape. I got too caught up in it all, Steve. When she ended things, I should have walked away, but I didn't. I begged for more, even resorted to harsh words when she refused. I felt used, like I was just there for her convenience. And then, when she was done, my needs didn't matter anymore. That's why I called her that night, not expecting you to answer. I was like an addict, craving just one more moment. But it cost me dearly, our friendship, George's trust, nearly my family and my marriage. It's heartbreaking, Steve. I almost lost the chance to watch my kids grow up. Things with Georgia are still strained. I was terrified when I realized you overheard me. I thought you'd confront me or tell Georgia, but you didn't. That's when I realized how much my marriage meant to me. Before, life with Georgia felt mundane. We'd be intimate occasionally, but it was routine. After you found out, though, I couldn't get enough of her until she learned the truth. Now, she won't even let me touch her. Not just intimacy, but any contact at all. Our conversations are minimal and tense. I'm just grateful she still lets me see the kids and takes me to my appointments. She says the first step to fixing this is getting her forgiveness. She's made it clear intimacy might never be part of our relationship again. But at this point, I'm just thankful to be under the same roof as my kids. I'll endure any consequences she deems necessary. The agreement she's having drawn up is strict. If I stray again, I leave with nothing but my clothes and whatever's in my wallet. No cards, investments, or bank accounts. Everything goes to Georgia, and I'd have to cut all ties with her and the kids forever. The second thing I need to do is seek your acceptance of my apology. I realize it doesn't automatically grant forgiveness or repair our friendship. It's simply my sincere expression of regret for my actions and recognition of my mistake. The third aspect involves Georgia having her own way of balancing the scales. She has a sort of free pass. At any point, she has the option to pursue her own interests, and I've no right to object. But honestly, I'm not concerned. The last time we had issues, she mentioned the same, but as far as I know, she never acted on it. Georgia's nearing 50 and her priorities have shifted. I believe it's more about her dignity than actual intent. So, Steve, I'm genuinely sorry from the depth of my heart. Please accept my apology. With my hands still recovering, I can't offer a handshake or fist bump, so I salute you instead. I returned his salute and prepared to let him leave. Steve, he added, there are three more things I'd like to discuss, briefly. I nodded for him to continue. After the incident with you, he started, you could have ignored me when I got injured. But you didn't. You showed me up, proving you're the better man. You helped me out of the car, gave me first aid, and even drove me to the ur. I'm deeply thankful for your help. If you ever need anything, just ask, and it's yours. The second thing is about the Chevelle. I might act knowledgeable about cars, but honestly, I was clueless about most of the work. The first time I tried without you, I nearly got into an accident. I want you to have the car. Take it whenever you're ready. If it's okay, I'd love to see it after you're done with it. But really, it's yours now. What I can't take. I started. Yes, you can, he cut in. You must. Deep down, Georgia still loves me, despite my faults. And she despises the car, fearing it might harm me. She's even had nightmares about it. She's adamant that the car shouldn't risk our family's well-being. So, please, take the car. It represents a friendship I regret damaging. Thanks, I said with a nod. I'll come by later today to pick it up. Just need to clear some space in the second bay of my garage. He hesitated before speaking again. I know it's not really my place, but I feel like I have to say this. Sarah, she really cares about you. Every time before. Well, before she was with me, she'd be there, looking so troubled, as if she was about to do something she deeply regretted. And afterwards, she would cry. Every single time. I'm just saying, maybe you should talk to her. Understand her reasons. Perhaps you could consider something like a mutual agreement, similar to what Georgia and I have. I bet she'd be more than willing. I simply nodded as he turned to leave. Watching him walk away, I mulled over his words. Despite my anger towards Rick, I couldn't find it in me to despise him anymore. Would I accept his car offer? Absolutely. What car enthusiast wouldn't want a Chevelle SS? Despite my usual dislike for GM cars, this was an exception. And about Georgia, I didn't feel guilty. She was with me now, in every sense. The only thing keeping her with Rick was their kids. Georgia had said it herself, she loved Rick for their history and their children, but she was in love with me. We had to be cautious, mainly to avoid any embarrassment for the kids. Our meetings were discreet, a secret only known to us. And then there was Sarah. My feelings towards her were still a mix of confusion and anger. I had loved her, and our connection went beyond the physical. It's strange how in modern times, intimacy and physical relations are seen as separate things. Physical intimacy doesn't necessarily equate to a deep connection. It's often just a fleeting moment, an encounter facilitated by technology, carrying little significance. In this era, hooking up is a common term. It's casual, often meaningless, a concept embraced by both men and women. It's a reflection of how relationships and intimacy have evolved. 
Instead of bringing two people together, casual encounters often lead to a gap between them, making any future interactions awkward and strained. Sometimes, they even actively avoid each other. In contrast, true intimacy is about emotional closeness, understanding, and caring for another person's feelings and moods. Sarah and I had a deep emotional connection well before we became physically involved. My entire life was dedicated to her happiness, and we had mapped out our future together. The breakup was extremely painful for me, especially because of the nature of her betrayal with someone very close to me. It was a dual loss, both Sarah and another significant person in my life. I could somewhat understand Rick's actions, even though they were hurtful. Unlike Sarah, he had not made any commitments of fidelity to me. Seeing Sarah filled me with a mix of deep sadness and anger. Well done, my love, she said, and her voice brought a small comfort. Where's Rick? I asked. He's asleep now. The teenager from next door is keeping an eye on him, she answered. I was thinking, is there someone here who could help a woman with her needs? Would I be all right for that? I asked. You would be perfect, she said with a slight smirk. Soon, we were in my room, lost in a world of gentle, lingering kisses. Being close to Georgia was an indescribable experience. Our movements were synchronized, enhancing our connection. I was captivated by her responses, the subtle sounds she made. Her breathing became faster as her excitement grew. Stevie, it's happening, she whispered, holding me tightly, expressing a wish to stay in that moment forever. Me too, I said, feeling a sense of gratitude for what I could have. She laughed, a sound I adored, and teased, even if I'm not as perfect as Sarah. Been keeping an eye on things, have you? I queried. She shook her head, no, love, I've been watching him. I needed to know if his excuses to me were the same he gave you. He told me he needed more than what I could offer, didn't want to push for it, especially after he'd strayed a few times. He was avoiding arguments. Of course, that was nonsense. He claimed he was still involved with me, even after you found out about his indiscretion. But before I did, he said he expected me to cut him off, and I will. It'll be a long time before I'm intimate with him again. I'm only with him for the children's sake. She took my hand, placing it gently on her. This is yours, Steve, she stated, then kissed my hand tenderly. And so am I I'll stay in that loveless marriage, but my heart is with you. He won't be able to be close to anyone for a while anyway. I looked at her, puzzled. She smiled slyly. His recovery is slower than expected. His hand won't function properly for another month, and even then, it'll be weak. As we dressed, I couldn't help but softly touch her. I marveled at the softness. I'll never tire of how they feel, I remarked. And I'll always appreciate the gentleness of your touch, she responded. She leaned back into me, guiding my hands as we stood close. Our lips met passionately once more. Georgia, if we continue, we'll be back in bed, I noted. Is this a tease? In show business, they say to always leave them wanting more, she smirked, reluctantly buttoning up her blouse, guiding my hands once more. What about Sarah? She inquired. I've made up my mind. I'm leaving her, I declared, my tone sharp, my mood shifting. Georgia kissed me softly, her ability to sway my emotions never ceasing to amaze me. If you talk to her, I'll give you a special treat, she offered. Georgia, I began, feeling disheartened. Truthfully, I'll give you the treat regardless, she continued. But I really think you should talk to her. You need to hear her side. I know what she shared with me. But I'm curious if she'll share the same story with us, unlike the deceitful man I married. I don't care about her reasons, I replied. I'm better off now. I have you. It's tough, but worth it. Stevie, I want you to talk to her, she insisted. This isn't about choosing one over the other. It's about whether you can manage both. Love is partly about ensuring the other's happiness. As much as you love and want me, you know I must do what's best for my kids. My three boys need their father. You've accepted that, and I'm deeply thankful. But I also need you to have someone when we're apart. And I think that person should be Sarah. And yes, I have my own reasons. I don't want you meeting someone new who might replace me in your life. With Sarah, we'll remain close. Could you consider it? For me? Okay, I agreed. Since you're close to her, ask her to give me some space for a few days. If she agrees, I'll postpone the divorce and talk to her. Maybe she can prepare what she wants to say and we'll meet this weekend. I'll let her know, she said. Then she kissed me again and left. At work that night, I witnessed George's influence. We had a few minor accidents, but nothing major. I was in the cafeteria on my break, recently spending them with Amanda. She had become noticeably flirtatious, hinting at more whenever we were together. Aware of my marital issues, she seemed to think she could be my solution. I wasn't convinced. She was attractive, but rumors suggested she was similarly flirtatious with some of the air doctors. I didn't fancy the idea of replacing one unfaithful partner with another. Amanda was suggesting coffee at her place after our shift when her expression suddenly changed. Did you hear what he said, you mean girl? Sarah's voice came from behind me, tinged with irritation. Could you maybe wait until he's not taken before you start flirting with him? Amanda said she'd catch up with me later and quickly left. Sarah, why on earth are you here at this hour? I questioned. Aren't you supposed to be asleep? Georgia rang me up, she replied, a grin spreading across her face. She filled me in on your conversation, and I've been so thrilled I couldn't catch a wink of sleep. 
I just had to come and thank you for letting me explain myself. You do remember you were supposed to give me some time to cool off, right? So I could hear you out without getting upset. I pointed out. Steve, I'm really sorry, she said, her voice filled with regret. It's just that when I hear good news, I can't help but want to share it with you. I have a good feeling about this. Georgia forgave me, and if you do, I promise to be the most devoted wife you could imagine. All right, dear, I'll see you this weekend, she said cheerfully. And you, stay away from any unsavory characters in the meantime. When I returned home that morning, I was mentally exhausted. Glancing over the fence, I saw Georgia shaking her head. Her three boys were playing in the yard, and Rick was on their back porch. He noticed me and gave a hesitant wave. I responded with a genuine wave and a thumbs up. His smile was the biggest I'd seen since this whole ordeal began. He tried to go back inside, but still struggled with his injured hands. Georgia sent one of the boys to help him. Once he was inside, she blew a kiss in my direction and sat down at her table, turning her back to me. I felt a twinge of sadness. It was the first morning in a long while we hadn't even chatted. A text message soon arrived. Sorry, love, I wish we could spend time together, but he's up and about. Thanks for talking to him, he seems happier. It's making things better for the boys here. He even hinted at wanting more. Can you imagine? I think I might tell him tomorrow about the baby. Sweet dreams. Dream of us. Love you. Gee. The message lifted my spirits immensely. I couldn't help but smile so broadly it hurt. My phone buzzed again. Stop grinning like that, you goof. Your happiness of my text is. Well, it's something, she wrote. I looked up to see her peering at me over the fence. I heard the sound of a car pulling into my driveway early in the morning, around 8 a.m., so I peeked out to see who it might be. Expecting it to be Sarah, I was surprised when I opened the gate and saw it was my mother-in-law, Sarah's mom. Hi, sweetie, she greeted me warmly. I know you must be exhausted after working all night, but we need to talk. You're always welcome, Carla, I replied, feeling a bit anxious but trying to conceal it. Would you like some coffee? She gladly accepted my offer. We sat at my kitchen table, and after a few moments of small talk, she got to the point. Stevie, I'm aware of the situation between you and Sarah, she began. I immediately became defensive. It's not what you think, I said hastily, worried she might know about Georgia. Relax, Stevie, she reassured me. I figured out the truth. I know the story about you and Sarah taking a break isn't accurate. If it were a mutual decision, Sarah wouldn't be so upset and constantly trying to see you. Her father was so concerned he wanted to confront you himself. That's when we realized Sarah was hiding something. After some probing, she confessed that you asked her to leave. I connected the dots and realized she must have been unfaithful. As soon as she broke down in tears when I mentioned it, I knew I was right. I was furious with her. We had a long, heated discussion, but the bottom line is that Sarah is truly unhappy. Stevie, I understand her actions were wrong, but I'm certain that she loves you deeply. And it's obvious you love her too. So the real question is, what would it take for you to consider giving her another chance? I was speechless. She calmly took another sip of her coffee, seemingly understanding that I wasn't ready to respond. I'm guessing that right now, forgiving Sarah is probably not on your mind. You're feeling angry, right? And there's a lot of hurt there too, I bet. You're probably wondering how you can ever trust her again. And part of you. On some level, you want her to feel the pain she caused you, don't you? I nodded in agreement. I went through the same thing. Deep down, I knew he loved me. Once I managed to see past the fog of anger, I realized I still loved him too. But what mattered most was our daughter. She needed her dad around, not just seeing him briefly now and then. So, I allowed him to come back home. Even after we decided to try and work things out, it was weeks before I could even look at him without feeling angry. Months passed before I could bear his touch. It took almost a year before we shared our first kiss again, and another six months before we were intimate. Even after breaking down those barriers, feeling love again and rebuilding trust took time. I still feel bursts of anger sometimes. As part of our agreement to stay together, he gave me a sort of free pass. I've never used it. I guess I never really wanted to. So, what you're saying is, I began. Yes, she confirmed. It's been over 20 years for us to reach this point. I can talk about it now without being overwhelmed by anger. Sarah's dad was unfaithful. We had been married for around eight years, and Sarah was about three. He told me later that he didn't mean to hurt me, that it was just a fling. It was a cliché situation. But even after that, our relationship changed forever. Our closeness is different now. No matter what others say or what you read, it's never quite the same. Sometimes I sense pity from him, as if he thinks I'm desperate for taking him back. Other times, I see guilt in his eyes. He often agrees with me, not because he believes I'm right, but because he feels he owes me that, or perhaps he thinks he has the upper hand. There are moments when I catch him glancing at other women, and he gets overly anxious about it. It's normal for people to look, but he's so ridden with guilt that he'll even switch the TV channel if an attractive woman appears. I don't want you and my daughter to end up like that. I want you both to be on equal terms, to be confident, and not feel trapped in a cycle of resentment and guilt like I have for so long. But right now, by dwelling on your anger towards Sarah, you're just prolonging the pain. What should I do then? I asked. 
You said it yourself, anger is a natural reaction. And right now, I'm so upset with Sarah, I don't know how to handle it. No, you couldn't, she said, a hint of a smile playing on her lips. I've watched you with Sarah since the day you asked her to leave. You've kept your composure, never once raising your voice. And I've even heard about you helping out that guy she got involved with. It seems like you're struggling to find an outlet for your anger. What should I do then? I asked, feeling lost. Don't get angry, she suggested. Get even. That's what I wish I had done. How do I do that? I asked, intrigued. In response, she confidently stood up and slipped off her dress, revealing a surprisingly well-maintained figure for someone nearly 60. There were the natural signs of aging, like slight wrinkles and the natural change in her silhouette, but her overall appearance was impressive. It sparked a curious thought in my mind about the aging process and its varied effects. I was dumbfounded, my mouth agape as I took in her presence. It would be quite the twist to take this to Sarah's bed, she said with a mischievous smirk. But, wouldn't that be wrong? I stuttered, grappling with the morality of it all. Why? She countered. Sarah already broke your trust. And you two are on the brink of separation. If she had to choose, she might prefer you being with someone else rather than losing you. The same goes for my husband. He owes me this much for his own indiscretions. It might even be a relief for both of us. And since it's just between us, no one else needs to know or get hurt. I remained frozen, trying to digest her words. I can see you're intrigued, she said with a knowing look, embracing her own allure and experience. I found myself inexplicably drawn to her, caught up in the whirlwind of the moment. Following her to my bedroom, she posed teasingly on the bed, an open invitation. I was conflicted, a storm of emotions and memories swirling in my mind, contrasting Sarah and Georgia. As the situation escalated, I couldn't stop comparing her to my memories with Georgia. Carla was enthusiastic, a different experience altogether, yet my mind kept drifting back to Georgia. She changed positions, pulling me back to the present. She seemed content, a purr of satisfaction escaping her as we reconnected. The experience was longer and more intense than any I had with Georgia, marked by Carla's expressive enjoyment contrasting sharply with the quieter moments I had known before. Don't stop, she urged in a whisper. It's okay, I'm safe. I continued with determination until I reached the peak of my emotions. Wow, that's intense, she exclaimed in the throes of her own excitement. Once I paused, she playfully explored the closeness we shared, commenting with a smile, we're quite the combination, aren't we? Suddenly, she shifted the dynamic, gently rolling me onto my back and attending to me with an unexpected fervor. That's when I was taken aback. Carla revived my energy far quicker than I thought possible. Her skills were unlike anything I had ever experienced. She was adept, using her mouth in ways that left me completely at her mercy. In mere moments, she had me overwhelmed by the sensations. Her technique was mesmerizing, especially how she playfully teased with her tongue, sending shivers through me. I was trying my hardest to hold back, anticipating an intense culmination. I looked down at her, captivated by the forbidden allure of the situation. The sight alone was pushing me towards what I felt might be the most monumental moment of my life. While Carla's touch was different from Georgia's, in this moment, she seemed unrivaled. In a moment of intense passion, I expressed my overwhelming pleasure. Carla then changed position, presenting herself in a way that accentuated her form. Despite the natural changes of her body, in this moment, she looked impeccable. She prepared herself with a confident gesture, guiding me to her with an inviting moan. With careful patience, I proceeded, feeling an intense connection. It was a challenge, like navigating through a complex, unexplored path. She expressed her own pleasure loudly as we both navigated this new experience. I was careful and deliberate in my movements, feeling an intensity like never before. She pressed herself against me, a sheen of sweat forming on both of us. It felt like an eternity before I was fully embraced by her warmth. Wow, she exclaimed. It's so intense. Just stay still for a moment. I noticed her hand wander, seeking her own pleasure. Hold me closer, Steve, she urged. Really feel it. As I obliged, embracing her, she began to move. Her sounds of pleasure grew louder and more frequent, words lost in the heat of the moment. She rocked rhythmically, starting gently but soon with more urgency. I matched her pace, and together we found a frantic, shared rhythm. I was holding on with a fervor, feeling as though we were charging forward like a locomotive on a downhill track. More, Steve, she encouraged in a breathless whisper, her voice filled with desire. She seemed to be lost in the moment, her body shaking, struggling to maintain our synchronized movement. Whether it was her own touch or my actions, something was driving her to the edge. She leaned forward, and I followed, still connected. Keep going, she urged. Don't stop. But I was beyond the point of control. Overwhelmed, I reached a point of no return. The intensity of the moment enveloped us both. To an outsider, the scene would have appeared chaotic. A tangle of limbs on the bed, gasping for air, too spent to move. Drenched in sweat, we were a picture of exhausted satisfaction. Do you remember the saying about a woman's prowess? She asked later. Yeah, I replied, still trying to catch my breath. You've outdone me. I can barely move. How many times do you think? She wondered aloud. Maybe twice, I guessed. You're right, she confirmed. 
For me, it was more. No one has ever brought me to that point so many times. There haven't been many before you, just a few significant ones. Stevie, I've saved the most interesting conversation for last, she said with a hint of excitement. Now we've got quite the dilemma. You're talking about my inability to even think about heading to the shower. I joked. No, darling, she chuckled. It's more complicated than that. I came here with a plan. I told you about your father-in-law's struggles, right? It's normal. After years together, the spark sometimes dims. Plus, he's past 60, so things aren't as they used to be. So, here's the thing, when I arrived, I thought, why not make this visit count? I wanted to give you a bit of payback against my daughter, thinking it might somehow bring you two closer. But I also had my own motives, easing some pressure off your father-in-law and, well, addressing my own needs. I do love the man, Stevie. But I felt resentful, remembering the times he was unfaithful. I feel like I missed out every time he was with her. Your father-in-law isn't a monster. He wasn't a habitual cheater. It was just a brief affair, and guilt made him confess. He was only with her a couple of times. So, technically, we're even. Though, after today, I might be ahead. But, Stevie, I'm not ready for this to be a one-time thing. Would you, maybe consider, seeing me occasionally? I'd say if we didn't, I'd go crazy with wanting, I replied. Carla, you're amazing. I can't fathom why anyone would risk losing you. I mean, just being with you is a joy. She laughed heartily at that. You youngsters think you've discovered something new, she said. I've been around, and practice makes perfect, dear. I took her hand gently. Changing the subject, she said with a smile, You're incredible, you know. Don't doubt yourself. And, could you perhaps talk to my daughter? She does love you. I'm not saying forget everything, just hear her out, see if there's a way forward. I've already reached out to her, I admitted. We're planning to talk. No promises, but I'm feeling more open to it. She laughed and stood up, heading towards the shower. Hold on, cowboy, she said playfully. You need to give me a break for a few days. Do you want to wear me out? Remember, I'm not as young as I used to be. She teased, playfully gesturing as if in mock pain, and then she closed the bathroom door behind her. I stood up and followed her. Stephen, what are you doing? She asked with a playful smile, leaning against the shower wall. She teasingly brushed against me, her touch electrifying. All right, one more time, she whispered. Her presence was magnetic, and I felt an overwhelming desire for her. She moved closer, and we struggled to find a comfortable position due to our height difference. I lifted her, supporting her firmly, and we found our rhythm. She wrapped her legs around me, urging me to match her intensity. Harder, Stevie, she called out, her voice echoing with the sound of the shower. Our pace quickened, a wild crescendo of emotion and physicality. In the heat of the moment, our energy peaked. We were both breathless. Afterwards, we were both so exhausted that I had to help her get clean and carry her to the guest room, since my own bed was a disarray from our earlier encounter. That evening at work, I was completely drained. Despite my fatigue, I remained caring and attentive to my patients, though everything seemed to take twice as long. I was relieved that it was my last night of the work week. When I arrived home early Friday morning, all I wanted was to collapse into bed, but Georgia had other plans. She surprised me with breakfast. Honey, I need your help with something, she said as she served me. I agreed to help without hesitation. She had a challenging evening ahead, planning to confront someone with significant news, and needed my support. Georgia left soon after to prepare breakfast for her family. Her children, always hungry, were a handful. She left with a promise of spending more time together soon, which I looked forward to, though, in that moment, sleep was my most anticipated desire. That morning, I found myself sleeping in longer than usual. I generally get by with just six hours of sleep, so if I hit the bed by nine, I'm usually up by three or four. But this time, I was roused from my slumber at six by a persistent knocking at my door. Groggily, I made my way to the door, yawning, feeling as though I hadn't really rested. To my surprise, it was Susan, Sarah's sister, standing there. She didn't even wait for an invitation. As soon as I opened the door, she barged in. Steve, we need to talk about Sarah, she began immediately. Have you had a chance to speak with her? We've planned a discussion for tomorrow, I replied. What are you thinking of doing? She inquired, her tone laced with concern. I'm not sure, I confessed. Initially, I thought about ending things. She looked shocked and sank into my sofa. That would devastate her, she exclaimed. I know Sarah made a mistake, but I don't think she can bear losing you. There must be another way. I opened up to her about my feelings of betrayal and the emotional turmoil I was experiencing. I shared how I had been juggling my studies and an internship at the hospital for the past year under immense pressure. I mentioned how my class started with 40 students, but only a handful of us managed to graduate. I get that you're upset, she acknowledged. But maybe instead of leaving Sarah, you could find a way to level the playing field. I was puzzled. What do you mean? Well, you could. Perhaps meet someone else, she suggested cautiously. It could be kept a secret. Then, things might feel more balanced between you two. I don't believe in retaliating like that, I responded firmly. How would seeking out someone else repair the trust that's been lost in my relationship? It doesn't need to be someone inappropriate, she countered. It could be someone you'd normally not consider. And who would that be? I asked, skeptical. 
Besides, in today's world, those kinds of boundaries don't seem to exist anymore. What about someone closer to home? Like your wife's sister? She ventured. Hell no, I replied. Why not? She asked, her lips curving into a frown. Because I care about you, I responded. You're like a sister to me. I couldn't just take advantage of you. Steve, I've liked you for so long, she admitted. We might not get another chance like this. Are you sure you want to miss out? She stood, turning to emphasize her point. I can't, I said firmly. Susie, you deserve someone who truly values you, who's proud to be with you. You're not someone to be kept in the shadows. You're far too wonderful for that. She looked at me, surprised. Also, I care about you deeply. I wouldn't do anything to hurt you, and in time, this could lead to regret and resentment, I explained. I want to be a person you can rely on to make the right choices for you, not someone who took advantage of a situation. I paused, and I have feelings for your sister. Our relationship might be strained, but I still have respect for her. Going down this path would only end in pain. Steve, you're the kindest man I know, she said, coming closer for a hug. As we embraced, she tried to guide my hands, but I resisted. Susie, I'm not as perfect as you think, I told her. You should go before I reconsider. I care about you, brother-in-law, she smiled, leaving. I closed the door behind her. Wow, you really are a gentleman, said Georgia, appearing from the kitchen. I looked at her, startled. I came through the back, she explained. I was checking if you were awake to discuss my situation. I'm here, but I don't see why we need to discuss it, I replied. Right now, I'm in a strong position in my marriage, she said. Rick's mistake gives me freedom, but if he knew about us, it would ruin everything. I need to keep him apologetic and under control, so we need to convince him that the current situation is just another consequence of his action. All right, whatever you need, I said, as she closed the gap between us with a smooth step. I desire this, she expressed with eagerness, her hands signaling her longing. I yearn for that intense connection, the kind we shared just days ago. It feels like an eternity since I was enveloped in your embrace. Our kiss was deep and lingering. As my hands wandered under her blouse, her breath hitched in anticipation. Stevie, if you keep this up, we're going to cross a line, she warned softly. Do you really think warning me will make me pause? I replied with a smirk. With a gentle nudge, she guided my hands away and suggested I join her on my deck after a short wait. Following her request, I sat on the deck, contemplating the need to clear out a section of my garage for the Chevelle. The challenge lay in the excess clutter. During winter, my Jeep Cherokee also braved the elements outside. Perhaps another trip to the hardware store for an additional storage shed was in order, along with laying a concrete foundation to do it properly. Suddenly, Georgia's voice pierced the air, filled with fury and betrayal. You deceitful person, I despise you. Leave, leave now. The sounds of objects crashing and doors slamming echoed. I hurriedly scaled the fence, intervening to prevent Rick from further distress. Let's calm down, I urged them. No need to raise voices where the children and neighbors can hear. Georgia, overcome with emotion, hurled a pot in my direction, barely suppressing my urge to chuckle. Georgia, please, let's be calm, I suggested. She rushed to me, embracing me as tears flowed freely. Why don't we all go to my place and talk this out? Mary Sue, curious about the commotion, peeked over the fence. Hey, Mary Sue, could you watch the kids while I have a chat with these two on my deck? I asked. Absolutely, she agreed, likely eager to be privy to the unfolding drama. I ushered Georgia and Rick into my yard, offering them beers. Could I have lemonade instead? Georgia asked. Sure, I replied, feigning annoyance. I shrugged at Rick, signaling my confusion about the situation, which he interpreted as me taking his side. So, what's happening here? I'm not sure what I did wrong this time, Rick said, clearly troubled. My hands were aching, so I politely asked her to fetch my pain medication when she had a moment. I even said please, emphasizing that she could do it at her convenience. I genuinely didn't know she was busy on a call. It's not about your medication, Rick, Georgia retorted sharply. It's about how you've hurt me. I've been apologizing every day since you discovered the truth, Rick responded, his voice filled with remorse. I'm truly sorry. I've promised to do anything to make amends. It's not just about your mistake, Rick, Georgia snapped. It's about what happened after. Georgia, I assure you, I haven't been careless since then. Well, aside from tinkering with the car alone. Steve, you really need to take this car away. Georgia wants it out of here. It's not about the car, Rick, Georgia yelled. It's definitely not the car. What is it then? Rick asked gently. Do you recall what happened a week after Steve found out? Georgia questioned. You were so insistent, so demanding. Every single night. Oh no, Rick realized. I didn't know. I thought we were careful. Georgia, we were always careful. Steve, maybe you should get checked too. Stop, Rick. You didn't infect me. You got me pregnant, Georgia revealed, her voice breaking. My comment, this was a little bit longer than I expected. What you guys think the final ending will be? Will you stay in this relationship? Comment down below, and the ending will come very soon.